So it has been some time since I talked about Boruto here on this channel. In fact, I haven't said anything about it since the very first volume of the manga arrived here in the States and the first two episodes of the anime premiered. Now, I was holding off on talking about Boruto for a reason, actually. A handful of them. One, I've been, unfortunately, incredibly busy, and two, I felt like it'd be best to give the series some time to work its way around to get through an arc or so before we went back and re-evaluated what I had mentioned after seeing the first two episodes. So, to start, I want to very briefly go over the very first arc of the Boruto anime, because what inspired me to really make this video was the announcement of the second arc that the anime was going to adapt, and that arc was, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the Naruto Gaiden arc, the seventh Hokage, and the Scarlet Spring. But, to rewind just a little bit, the first arc of Boruto was basically an introduction arc, you could call it a school arc, similar in a sense to the first arc of Naruto, but I think Boruto takes it a bit of a step further. I like to think Boruto pushes into the realm of slice of life just a tiny bit. You sort of get initially this sort of villain of the week style, so the episodes only sort of loosely connect up until you inch closer and closer to the climax of the arc. And in doing so, they sort of made all of that stuff come together, all of those introductory episodes that showed you the world in which Boruto and his friends lived in. And I feel like the arc as a whole was okay. It was not astounding, but it was serviceable, which was a word I used to describe Boruto initially. I will not spoil the overall story content of this arc in case you have yet to watch it, but I will say basically there is a threat that has been pushed into the Leaf Village and Boruto and his friends wish to solve it without getting involved with the elite of the village, or rather the original Naruto cast. Boruto really wants to make this problem his own, he wants to take care of it on his own, furthering that rebellious attitude we talked about that the first two episodes of the anime and that first volume of the manga represented. I will commend the first arc for finding a way to connect all of those sort of loosely threaded plot points in those first few episodes to a conclusion that made sense, but more importantly, we had a conclusion of this arc that made sense within the realm of the series to which the original cast could not necessarily solve the problem. I think one of the inherent flaws with Boruto is the series needs to be creative because it has to have conflict in which Boruto and the second generation of Shinobi must be able to solve on their own. If it's something in which the original Naruto cast is able to swoop in and take care of everything, I think it loses a lot of meaning. So after that first introductory school arc, the series moves forward in adapting the Seventh Hokage and the Scarlet Spring manga. The series makes a bit of a transition to put Boruto out of the spotlight and replace him with Sarada at least for a few episodes. And let me tell you guys, when I first found out they were finally adapting this volume of the manga, I was so excited. I really, really enjoyed the seventh Hokage and the Scarlet Spring, and I felt like the dynamics introduced in that manga to flesh out the new Uchiha clan were much needed and appreciated. That arc is not perfect, however, so it was up to the anime studio to find a way to accurately represent the tone and the intent that Kishimoto had when creating that final volume, and possibly find creative ways to make it even better. So the question question is, did they succeed at adapting properly and improving in areas in which they could? Well, before we answer that question, it's worth talking a little bit about what this arc is even about. Basically, Sarada helms the person versus self literary conflict. As she has grown up, she has grown more and more frustrated with her bloodline, and that's an important thing to note here. Sarada is an Uchiha, essentially a cursed bloodline in the Naruto universe, and her father hasn't been around at all as long as she can remember. So what does she do? She takes it upon herself to learn more about what's going on because Sakura never seemed to mention enough about Sasuke to really give Sarada any answers. Sarada does as much research as she can on Sasuke and on her birth but ultimately comes up short. So what does she do? She decides to go on a journey to look for Sasuke herself 
accompanied by Chocho and none other than Naruto. I found it hilarious that there's actually a scene in which Naruto says something along the lines of, what? What do you mean this isn't about me? You don't understand, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> Will she succeed in her hunt for answers and for her father? That I will allow you to find out. Though going back to the adaptation standpoint, I felt like the anime did a superb job in taking page to screen. Virtually everything that was represented in the manga is in true form here. But what about making it better? Well, in a way they did, in a way they didn't. Let me first talk about what they did to make the experience all the better, and that was the animation throughout. The presentation as a whole I feel like is to be commended. It's not perfect, Boruto, Naruto, none of it ever is, but what they did here was serviceable at worst and fantastic at best. There were no instances in which the animation was so poor that it pulled me out of the experience, and there were other instances in which I found it to be so fluid and fun to watch that I couldn't help but notice those scenes multiple times. The final episode in particular has some very great fight scenes, easily hearkening back to some of the more impressive scenes we saw in the original Naruto as well as Naruto Shippuden. I feel like the growth we received for all members of the Uchiha clan was great, and seeing Naruto once again in that Hokage role is also well done. However, I will say that Kishimoto has never been perfect in writing, and it's never been his strongest suit. This is unfortunately still evident here, as there were moments in which the anime studio could have added a bit more depth to some of the scenes and added a bit more backstory and interaction between certain characters, but then you'll get the argument of this particular scene wasn't in the manga, so therefore it's not canon, etc, etc, that never seems to end, but I felt like there were portions of that manga that were more bare bones than they could have been. I personally would have loved to see more interaction between Sasuke, Sakura, and Sarada. I know that the arc is all about them, but keep in mind it's only a handful of episodes long and Sasuke doesn't even show up until midway through. We do miss out more on seeing them as a family and I felt like that was something that could have been improved upon when they announced it in the anime. Don't get me wrong, the anime did make some little touches on their own, but all it was was something that left me wanting more. And as I said before, the writing does still have its flaws, there are certain plot points throughout this arc that are not as well sharpened as they could have been. There are things that make sense and are acceptable, but I say this arc is best enjoyed when you don't allow yourself to sit back and think, huh, how is that even possible? Where did that come from again? Uh, do I need to get on the Naruto wiki and check the lore? Because if you're like me, you will waste hours of your night where you should be sleeping because you have to get up early for class the next day reading about Naruto lore. Not sure if that means I have a problem. Despite its faults, I still very much enjoyed this arc. In fact, I'd say it's the best thing so far in Boruto. Am I slightly biased towards it? Yes. Yes, I absolutely am. If you guys are not already aware, Sasuke is my favorite character in Naruto, and right now, Sarada, by extension, kind of is my favorite in Boruto, so being able to see them front and center is something that I am going to enjoy a lot. There were even moments in this arc that made me a little teary because they were done very, very well. In fact, I actually don't recall myself feeling the exact same way, the exact level of emotion as the first time I read it in the manga. I'm sure those moments were there, but I felt like the anime was able to convey them a little bit better, but in a sense, the anime can sort of do that. Scenes that are fluid, scenes that require movement like fight scenes are going to look better in animation. And then some moments that are more somber might also be better because of the addition of voice acting and background music. As I've said previously, I felt like the best parts of this manga were only highlighted in the anime adaptation, and the worst parts were never made more ugly, they were just still there. Maybe with a couple of the edges smoothed over a tiny bit, but if you enjoyed it in the manga, 
I think there's only more for you to enjoy here. If you haven't watched any Boruto at all, but you really are a stickler for reading all of those manga volumes and seeing those adaptations, I think you owe it to yourself to sit down and watch the handful of episodes that do encompass the seventh Hokage and the Scarlet Spring. I am curious, I wonder where the anime is going to go from here on out. Volume 2 of the Boruto manga is out, I think it just came out this month, but unfortunately I currently have no money to purchase it so I can't really give you guys any insight as to where the manga version of the Boruto story is moving forward. I will of course keep watching the anime every week so I'm very curious as to where the anime is going to go in order to bridge that gap between the Boruto anime that took place significantly before the Boruto movie in which they've all been put into a squad. Based on the preview that ended in this very last episode of the 7th Hokage and the Scarlet Spring arc, the Sarada arc, it looks like the Boruto team is finally starting to come into fruition. And just to clarify, I don't have a Crunchyroll subscription or a Hulu subscription or anything like that, so I do see these episodes on a week delay. So yes, I am aware that this episode I talked about in the preview already exists, and technically, I guess you could say I am a week behind on posting this review of the arc itself. But I do what I can. It is right after midnight right now, and I actually sat down and watched this as soon as I finished my homework for the night at 11.30 p.m., so it's been a long day. <laughs> So with that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Definitely please leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you happen to think of this arc. Or if you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. And if you do like it, come back and let me know why. Or if you don't, let me know why you didn't like it. And I'll catch you guys next time.